All right, all right, all right. Let's finish up those conversations. Shh. All right, thank you. Thank you all for coming to the panel on censorship. We bring to you some of the most censored people in art in our space. That is the reaction that we wanted. Thank you. Well done. All right. Well, I think we do like a quick round of intros. Uh, and then I would just, I would love to kind of get into your personal experiences with censorship. I see the head shake already. This is going to be good. Uh, we promise to spill lots of tea in the space, leave you walking away with things you can't find on Twitter, and uh, keep it interesting here. So uh, why don't we go around the circle? Hi, everyone. I'm Simone Risi, yeah, the monkey. Uh, I'm a photographer and art director and the founder of uh, Gea Vision NFT Gallery in the historic center of Bologna, Italy. And yeah, I'm here like uh, one of the most censored people of Web3, I think, uh, most for my photography, but I think we will talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Pauline Fayef, I'm a nude artist and so I've been facing many, many times uh, censorship on social media and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be great to have this talk today. I uh, asked to do this talk here in NFC because usually we don't talk enough about this topic uh, in conferences so I think uh, it's important for everyone to, to, know, to know what we have to face every single day. Hello, my name is Una, and if I'm making eye contact with you, that's your signal to shut the fuck up. Well done, well done. Hi. Woo. We love it. My name is Una. Um, if you go to my Twitter right now, half of you probably won't be able to see it because we love freedom of thought. So we will dive more into that, but I will leave it at that. You, you, take it away. Hello, everybody. I'm, 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 my name is Yu Yu, and I'm a digital collage artist. And, yeah, and my work is mostly focused on the uh, uh, photograph nude body form and collage in, into painting and, or any imagery. So, of course, well, I've um, experienced a lot of censorship on social media, like most of us here. And we can talk about it more later. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and thank you all for coming, too. I mean, it means a lot for you to choose to come here out of like, all the choices you have today. So thank you for that. Uh, my name is Patrick Amadon. Uh, China doesn't like me. Um, so why don't we get in? I, I'm, I would love to know, like, what, why is censorship important? Like, what about kind of the Web3 ethos backs this? And kind of like, why, why should we care? about what is seen and what isn't seen and from your personal kind of artistic practice like how does this impact you and how does what you do signal something to the rest of the world who wants to take it away yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how why is so important for us is because i mean for artistic freedom in my case um because uh, because of censorship i feel that i cannot be myself that I cannot express myself um, because society has decided for me that what I do is not available, not acceptable. Um, I feel uh, stuck. Um, I don't feel free to be myself. And as an artist, I think it's the worst feeling that we sh should feel, not being able to, to share, not being able to to show works, it's, it's not um, just about art, it's also about being able to live through our art. We cannot, if no one can see it, how can we share it? So it's painful um, in case of uh, society vision, it's painful about economical situation, but also mentally. Uh, I used to be sick because of uh, censorship, because I, um, I don't know, I feel, uh, yeah, I feel stuck and um, I feel I don't belong to this world in a way and, um, and I cannot create anymore. Mm. Yeah, I think mm, that censorship 
when we talk about censorship, we have to understand what is censorship. And I think it's the, the worst enemy of freedom in every, in every kind, not only in the art, but also in the politics, science, you know, the normal life, the real life, not only in the Web3, but uh, a lot of the Web2, web yes, in the real life. So, yeah, that's, that's easy to say, but I think it's difficult to understand what really means freedom, not censorship. Because if you understand freedom, you can understand censorship, I think. So it's the worst enemy, it's the opposite. It's the centralizing, it's the, um, the big companies that can uh, decide for you what you can do, what cannot. I think this is. I can piggyback off of that. So the way that the algorithms actually work, right? They tell us that we all have the same capability. They tell us that we all have the same agency. But once you're actually in the trenches, what they do, rather than giving you an outright no, you're not allowed, they just push you to the shadows. So it's a mechanism of suppression which feeds off of making everyone think that they have the same ability to communicate. But then once you're actually expressing ideas, particularly ones around the female form, ones around nudity, ones around gender, or ones around sexuality, they do not outright tell you no, because they know if they told, look at us on stage, if they told us no, that would be a fucking hellfire at their door. So instead, they don't tell us no, they just push you to the back of an algorithm. And I recently did like a very silly gag piece on Tezos. I went to my Twitter profile, completely incognito, and every single image that I have ever posted on Twitter, even if it's a fucking gif of Winnie the Pooh, has been blocked. When you go to my profile, it tells you, you need to change your settings to view this account. Wild. I have a question, because now we're all talking about the censorship as a social media platform. Mm. But as a social media platform, I more see as a guideline of how we use this platform. So for me, it's like, yes, of course, I'm struggling with being deleted my picture on Instagram and being shadow banned on Twitter. But I understand in a way that, oh, is there company policy? And how can I work around it to express my message? It's something that, as a user, I have to think about. And in a general, in the big umbrella about censorship, is like, I don't stand, I, I don't agree with the extreme censorship, of course. Everybody has need to have the freedom to express their idea and everything. But I also treat freedom, 100% freedom, is a dangerous thing. Because we're all human beings, and we know we're disgusting. So I'm more in the, in the middle, ground, try, middle ground and try to understand what's the best and try to train each other and have a critical think, thinking on what's the right thing to do. So that's my, my take. I, uh, I like these takes. Um, I, I, I think just like taking it up a level, uh, I think just around the world you see freedom of speech under assault, freedom of assembly under assault. You look what's happening in Hong Kong, you look what's happening in so many places around the world, you look at Florida burning books that they now deem objectionable. You have so many governments trying to control the information that their citizens get, because if their citizens got the actual unfiltered information, they would make different choices. And I think what we're just seeing on so many different fronts uh, is an assault on the freedom of speech, on the freedom of information, on the freedom of assembly. Uh, and I think that's what's most pernicious about censorship is that it's really just attacking these basic human rights that we all have. And as digital artists, kind of being at the forefront of culture, I think that in so many different ways, we're fighting, we're fighting this war on our own fronts. And ultimately, I don't think you can have a functioning society, a functioning democracy, a functioning society, unless we have access to information to make our own choices about things. And having governments do this for their own purposes uh, I think ultimately uh, is incredibly damaging, but watching the wave of this just strengthen over the last couple years with China exporting their firewall to different countries around the world, the number of countries that are now going deep red in terms of internet censorship and surveillance, uh, I think we live in a very, very difficult and dangerous time right now. 
And I think it's incumbent upon all of us to do our part to acknowledge that, to fight that, and to just not let this censorship go unchecked. And that's why I just have tremendous respect for my you know, speakers on the stage here, because on their, in their own ways, they're all fighting censorship of their artistic expression, of their artistic beliefs. And while you may not think like, oh, that's relevant to me, it's all part of this global battle we have to just be able to have access to information, have access to free speech. So even if it doesn't resonate with you on an individual level, it's all part of something that I think is incredibly important. Yeah, I do agree with you, but also I want to add that what is important is to get the information and to also educate people. They need to know. They need to know because if we want people to accept each other, they have to know that we are not the same. We don't have the same values, we don't have the same culture, and it's totally fine. But we have to accept each other as we are. And with censorship, especially about art, we cannot, so we cannot believe in a, in a better world if we are not able to, to speak about what we are. Okay, so there's a wonderful kind of feminist theorist, her name is Donna Haraway, and she talks about knowledge being built as a web. So when we think of a web, think of the more tension points that you have on a web, the more resilient the web becomes. But those guys are really annoying the shit out of me. Hey guys, can we keep it down in the back? Thank yeah, you, Patrick. Thank you. So, when you build a web of knowledge, the more points of intersection you have, the more resilient the web is. When you start to cut off points of the web, literally imagine a spider web, right? When you start to cut off points, the web gets shaky. It's easy to come down. We need these different distinct points that are anti-censorship, that are pro-independent thinking, that, that make the web resilient. And we like to talk about Web3 kind of as this ecosystem. Well, let's think about it as an intellectual ecosystem. It's a set of knowledge that we're building together. So how can we embody each person gets to have their own point of connection to the web rather than cutting them off? Well, I, th I, think that's a, I think that's a really good point. I think part of the problem is like, we all know censorship is bad. Right, but like, what do we do with the tools that we have right now? What do we do with our social media? What do we do with the power that we have right now to actually do something about it? So like, how do you see the future? How do you see this improving? Like, what can we take away from this talk beyond censorship bad? I have a question for you. Like, what, what do you mean by uh, all censorship is bad? But does it mean that you can um, you have the absolute freedom to think whatever you want and say whatever you want and even if, because we have 8 million people in, in the whole planet and everybody from so many different backgrounds and different culture and wh what I stand may be different from what you stand and what kind of the middle ground it is because that's why I said earlier 100% freedom is a dangerous thing so what's the solution and, and what did you call the rules or the censorship how, how do you see those you, you would stand for the absolute no censorship in the whole world. I can praise whatever dangerous thought that I have. Just a question, no offense, in all respects, sorry. I think, uh, no, I think, I, think it's a, I think it's a really good question. I think it's something that a lot of people think of, like, okay, well, where do you draw the line? And I just think with so many things, especially talking to a crypto crowd here, the answer isn't top down. The answer isn't a set of rules set by the government to say what you can and can't say that gets abused. That's a, that's, a, that's a very dangerous path. I think we live by social contract, right? I feel like a lot of us here trust people more on Twitter in the space than they do close friends because we know it's gonna be on chain, right? So I think there's something about how do we construct a healthy social contract to address issues or outlier issues around censorship to make sure that people feel safe and have the freedom to express their own views without being targeted by other people without having to rely on the Chinese government to say what you can and can't post. Yeah. Oh, yes, sa, sa, sa. okay. I think that when we talk about the future and maybe it's strange to say in a, in a Web3 event I think that the future is in real life because the real life is more 
attention <laughs> decentralized. Yes, there are cops, policy, you know, but here in the real life, in this event, we can show everything we want, I think. Art, we, te we can talk about, I think, everything. I don't know if I say something that is not in your opinion, I will be a, a theory, um, how do you say, um, a theory, how do you say in English? Complotista. Uh, how do you say? <laughs> Conspiracy, exactly. Exactly. Not in the real life we can talk. In the online, if you just put a, a strange opinion, you are the, the enemy, you know? So I think in real life we can talk, we can show, we can, we can fight, but without anyone that can uh, block us, I think. So that's the reason why with, for example, Gear Vision, I started creating real life events or in real life gallery or in real life meetings with our eyes, with our bodies, you know. That's my opinion. Also, I love Web3, I love crypto, I will build with, build with you uh, everything we can, uh, but I think the future is uh, in the real life, yes, my opinion. <laughs> Um, in my side, I would love to have a choice, and that's what we don't have. I mean, I understand if you don't like what I do, but you should be able to see it and make your own choice. And that's what I'm fighting against censorship. Because I totally understand that we don't have the same opinions, I don't, that we don't share the same values sometimes, but if I'm shadow ban, if I'm censored, you cannot know what you think about it. And this is the worst part, and I think it's the worst part in Web 2 right now. Um, yeah, I just hope for a better future, that's why I'm part of Web 3, that's why I want uh, this, uh, this kind of freedom. Okay, so algorithms are dumb. They're brilliant, but they're also dumb. They cannot handle nuance. So a perfect example is Instagram now allows you to show topless photos of your breasts. I've been doing this performance about my breasts, yet it is me stood in a gallery. White walls stood. So Instagram, the algorithm, doesn't read that as protest. They don't read that as education. The algorithm doesn't read that as art. Even though it is all three, relying on an algorithm to try and communicate nuance is always going to leave us shot in the foot. So when it's these algorithms that are actually mediating how we see, yet they're telling us the message, oh, it's freedom of thought here. You're like, no, 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 that's actually not what's happening. So I think the question is, how do we get more humans into algorithms so we can kind of like challenge that degree of censorship? But again, this is very different from the concept of censorship that you're talking about. I'm talking about censorship online, and what you, you were so eloquently speaking to before was censorship of thought. Well, I think it's a, I think it's a combination of what you both just said. Um, we're, I mean, whether it's digital art or physical art, we're living in a hybrid time right now where it's going to be both for a minute. And there are so many limitations with your ability to engage on social media. You know, for a lot of people, they just like hop off, they get heated. They just say something, they hop off. They don't have to follow up the discussion. In real life, you generally finish the argument, right? I mean, like, you at least, like, talk to the person. You can't just, like, vanish. You know, I wish I, know, I, wish I could sometimes, but I, I generally got to stick around. You know, so I think there's that. Like, there's so much nuance that gets lost. And I feel like there's so much in real life around just following through with these discussions. Because, I mean, cancellation is a whole form of censorship to begin with. You know, people just getting the social media mob to go after somebody that they find objectionable. They get the social media mob to go after something that they don't want to see. Um, so I think a lot of that has to do, like, that's why I guess that's one of the great things about events like this, is you get to see people. You get to see, oh, this is Simone, this is Pauline, Una, you, you. Like, you get to get to know the person behind the profile. So when we have these discussions, and let's face it, the people that are coming to these conferences, the people that are making the effort to go to Lisbon, to go to New York, are the people that 
often care deeply about the space and are involved in these discussions. And the more we have actual relationships with each other, the more you see the person behind the PFP when you're having a discussion, and the more I feel like we can bring empathy and humanness to those debates, and we can avoid kind of going off on the whole social media thing. And because uh, ultimately, like what we're doing um, is the we're creating the foundation that tens of thousands of artists and people in Web3 will take from us in the future. Like what we're doing matters and we're creating the world that a lot of people inherit. And I think a big part of that is like, we're building it right now and how we interact is how people interact in the future. Everyone will follow our example to some degree. So I just think like to your point about the real world, like we don't escape the real world ever. And I think a lot about just yeah. that is critical for this space. Come on, I think the, the power uh, both in, uh, in real life and in Web3 or online, the power is the unity. The unity, because if you are, if you are, uh, we are in a, um, in a big, uh, I don't know, in a, in a place and we can fight together, uh, we can create a, 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 a mass, a mass of a thousand or millions of, uh, or of peoples. Uh, and we, we have strength, we have, we have power. Also, online, we have the technology that can help us. Uh, of course, the, um, the blockchain, we have uh, a community that can grow um, faster than a, a real life uh, community, okay? Uh, so, in both cases, the, the power is the unity, and we have to talk about it for this reason, because people need, people, everyone need to know what is freedom, uh, because maybe something, uh, so sometimes we think we are free, but are we really free? Not only in the art, in the life, <laughs> in the real life. Are, are we free? So this is the question, and uh, what we can do to fight? A question. <laughs> well, we, we love sovereignty. We love decentralization. We love being able to make our own choices, control our own fate, and control our own keys. But oftentimes, like, that runs into somebody else doing the same thing and it, like, offends you on social media, right? I feel like part of this is just we're not used to discomfort. And I feel like we're entering this phase where because of decentralization, because of sovereignty, because of kind of digital identity, you have a little bit of security. Like you're running into opinions and art and photos that you may disagree with or dislike. And that's just part of it. And I think people have to learn and relearn to say like, you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to run into opinions that you disagree with. And how do you deal with that in a healthy way? I think is a big part of actually like getting rid and moving through a lot of these like soft censorship uh, type situations. That's exactly what I think is like, now uh, pushing to cancel the censorship is a very long journey and, and it's also a quite, uh, it needs a lot of education to each other to train each other to have a critical thinking, to, to acknowledge what is right or wrong or what is the middle ground, what's the balance between different culture, different background. That's what I think. But it's a very long journey, and it's a slow journey. But who decides what is wrong or good? You will never have the answer, because we have so many people on the planet Earth. So, so, so if, uh, I really don't, I really kind of disagree, like, from the Western point of view to judge the, the, what, what happened in Asia, it's wrong. Because uh, for me, it's like, just say, for your example, you say China have a hardcore censorship, and I'm personally from Taiwan, and we're a democracy country, and we have all the freedom, but we are very close to China, so we know we know what happened over there. But what I personally uh, understand is that the people in China, they don't think there's the biggest problem. They, have fi they find a way they express themselves. Yes, they might face a lot of punishment from the government, but they find a way to exp express themselves. But from the West point of view, they are the, ex the, the biggest evil. But so, so this is a very interesting way to see things and if we can put ourselves in their position to try to th see things and if what they are, the Chinese government do is the censorship, we don't know. I, I don't know, I don't have the answer because I don't live there, so. 
So, okay. I, <laughs> I think it's difficult to say uh, what was you saying, but maybe a trick and tip to understand is to watch where the rules comes from, okay? Is from my brother or is from uh, a government, government? Is it from, I don't know, a people, a person that love me or a people that hate me, that use me for uh, his or uh, its... Uh, uh, for money, for uh, for what? So I think that that's my way. That's the way that I use when I have to understand if I I'm talking with a person with a company uh, that is that is giving me freedom or censoring. I don't know if uh, <laughs> it's difficult to say for me, but yeah. Where, where come from the, uh, the rule? To understand if it's safe or not. I don't know <laughs> if you understand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, I mean, just like a little context of the China thing. I put up art on a billboard that was taken down by the government uh, March of last year. Uh, and now I'm looking at a significant jail term in China. Wow. Uh, so I can't go to China, I can't fly Chinese airlines, I can't go to Thailand, I can't go to, I can't go to Vietnam. Uh, yeah, so, you know, like, would that have been a legal expression in Hong Kong a few years ago? Sure, right? I put the names of protesters up on a billboard in the middle of, a, you know, Hong Kong during Art Week. You know, like, and look what happened, right? I'm classed a foreign agent, right? If I go there, I'll be arrested. Like, that is just another story of what's been happening. Um, and I think China is just, uh, they're a trendsetter when it comes to censorship. There's a lot of terms that are banned, a lot of people that are banned. You take photo with the wrong artist, you get accosted by the police. Like that's not an environment that encourages anybody to speak their mind, to express themselves. It's a, it's a controlling information for the sake of an entity that isn't you. Right? There's a lot of good people and a lot under, underneath a lot of bad governments in the world. So I think that there's always just going to be a lot of people that are going to be being, being oppressed. And I think you have to separate the people from the government, but also appreciate that there's a lot of governments out there that have uh, very, very ideas that are very contrary to what we see as free, fair, and open societies. And a lot of those are being exported, you know? So I think it's just really important to kind of keep that in mind because. I think we have this idea in the West, especially, you know, that we have inalienable rights. Like we have the freedom of speech, we have the freedom to assemble, we have the freedom to control of reproductive rights. And I don't think the West is really prepared that we're really just one legislative session away in the US. We had one president, one Congress, and women lost the right to control the reproductive rights. You know, these things that you think are your rights can vanish very, very quickly. And if anything, I think you look at what happened with the disassembly of Hong Kong over the past decades, and you can just see like how quickly what you think are inalienably your rights can be taken away from you. And censorship is one of the leading tools for doing that. Censorship is controlling the information that will eventually allow people to inflict upon you and your society some really bad shit. So I think that's why it matters. That's why when you talk even about, you know, nude art, we talk about performance art, you know, we talk about what you do, like these are really just the front lines and when they fall back because they get censored, guess what? Someone else is gonna get censored next. So it's always a fight and it matters. Even if the, even if the art doesn't resonate with you, it matters that the artists are able to be able to do it because as long as they can do it, they can hold that line and we know that we're fighting censorship and keeping that at bay. I got nothing. Leave it to an American man to tell you that freedom is important. <laughs> I had to, I had to. You laid it up for me, you laid it up Yeehaw, for me. Yeah. Okay, question. How many of us in this room have been followed on Twitter by an account that either says pussy in bio 
or has exactly one of those things, right? Everyone, yes. So you are sat here on stage with four artists who make art about the body, self-authored, with self-agency, it embodies every single one of the crypto tenants, yet how is it that on Twitter, you can't see my shit, you can't see Pauline shit, you can't see Simone shit, you use shit, you definitely can't see, and Pussy and Bio followed you today. How do we sit with that discrepancy? Open-ended question, probably rhetorical. Yeah, sometimes I think that uh, Twitter or Meta for Instagram, I've been, my Instagram account has been deleted from Instagram uh, completely after years of work. And you know what, what it means, a full-time work of uh, a growing a community. And it, sometimes I think that uh, this company uh, are okay with this bot because why your art is instantly banned right like five minutes later you post it and these bots are, are working always and no one stop it. <laughs> well, technology always moves faster than people, right? We witness that. It is just, that is what it is built for. It is built to move faster than the decisions that we can consciously make. So every little bit of inch that we give it to make decisions for us goes counter. They're always gonna push it to a level where we actually don't need it, where we don't want it. That's why I think all of us here, hopefully, value the idea that decentralized thinking is just as important as decentralized finance. Well, I think they're, I think they're one and the same in so many ways. The problem with Twitter is that we're using Twitter. The problem is, is that we're trying to do a lot of this stuff on infrastructure that wasn't built by us, for us, with what we want to do in mind. You know, uh, we're on crypto. Crypto is not, Bank of America didn't start crypto, right? Like crypto is a decentralized thing that allowed us to have sovereignty over an element of our financial lives, right? Which has in turn led to sovereignty and a lot of our artistic lives as well. But that was built by us outside of the system. And we talk about, oh, the Twitter algorithm, oh, Instagram, like, we're trying to use tools that weren't built by us for a different world, for our purposes, and that we're always going to have issues with that. Um, I'm optimistic about some of the decentralized Web3 platforms that we have built up. I am sad to see that there's issues on Warpcast with censorship, but I just think that we have to acknowledge that like, there will always be issues when we're using legacy stuff from the other world to do what we want, to promote our agendas, to promote our anti-censorship, to share art freely without being censored. Um, I just think that we're very early. This is all very new. You know, we have a long way to go, but I just think like, if we want it to work for us, like, we have to build it for us. And I know that's a big ask, but ultimately like, that's what it's gonna come down to. So I just think like, support your devs, support your artists. Like, we're all here together. Like, we support each other. And uh, I think we can actually create the things that we need to create the world that we want to live in. Yeah, that's crazy because last year I was in the same exact stage and I asked exactly the same because I think that's exactly what we need. We need just a way to express ourselves by building in with our peer because we know each other, we share the same vision, that's why we are here, but we don't have the tools now. I have a question, just curious, like how many of us in the audience or us, like when we want to post something to the public on Twitter or on social media, how many times you ask yourself, is this suitable for everybody? How, how many times uh, have, have you ever questioned, because for myself, my work is very new, it is like combined a lot of male nudity, and my work, I believe, and it needs a lot of understanding and like uh, uh, information exchange to, to make people understand why I do this. And I also have a second doubt, is, that, is this suitable for the children or for everybody or people from Middle East or whatsoever? So I constantly debate in my head that how much I have to adjust my imagery or whatever information I wanna post to make it accessible to everybody and then to make the biggest impact that my message can deliver to all everywhere. So how many of us have you ever, when you post something and you think about? Yeah, sure, but um, uh, I thought about it many times and now I think that I'm not the one who has to educate 
Like, I'm sorry, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to, to know myself better with my heart, to accept myself, to love myself. Uh, but like, uh, I did it by myself. No one helped me about that. Um, and that's why I had so many issues to accept uh, my body and uh, who am I. Um, but I think we need, we need parents, we need people around us to, to help about that. But I'm not those people for others, so we have to do it. And, and we just have to be able to, to express ourselves because we cannot live in a world where we have to fit into boxes every time. We are not the same and it's totally fine. The, uh, the trick is to offend everybody once so nobody feels targeted. <laughs> All right, like, it's okay, like, we can disagree. And that's, I think that's one of these things that's been lost in social media is like, we can disagree and still be friends. I can think that you are hurting the space with some argument you're making and we can still agree on other things and be friends. Like, it's okay to disagree. I can't be friends with somebody who doesn't disagree with me. Like, that would be weird, right? Like, so I feel like we just have to like, encourage dialogue, encourage debate, encourage discussion, encourage disagreement. If your friend doesn't like what you're saying, cool, you can still be friends. And I just think that's one of these lost elements, especially when we're talking about all this. You talk about like having to like hedge your bets and make sure you're not offending anybody in the space. That leads nowhere good. Uh, so I just like the idea that like we don't hedge our bets. We don't try to streamline things for an audience. We just say what's on our mind authentically and just be confident to know that like the people that are listening will be okay if like they disagree with you any number of times and you can still be friends, you can still make your living, you can still sell your art and people aren't going to be, you know, bringing out the pitchforks because they disagreed with you once. I think we're coming up on time. Great. So, um, I think we're, com we're coming up on time here. Um, I just want to, if you have any closing remarks, uh, but I just, I guess before you do, I just want to say like really appreciate like everything you all have to say. I know that like you're, you're, you're not lying when it comes to the people that, you know, are getting censored on Twitter. Like, you four are always at the front of the debate. So um, just uh, appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, it matters. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Before we end it, do, we, do you have anything to show, everybody? Do you have any art you want to show? Find our art. <laughs> no. <laughs> Una? Okay, so I will end with a very simple exercise. Try and find me on Twitter. Good fucking luck. And by my lips. Yeah, you can find me now main stage because actually I have to go downstairs now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Uh, the que my question, the final question to close is, is this an escape or a fighting? Because I, I, I don't understand if I escape from the algorithm and uh, modify the, the, the images, my photo, in order to make it available for the platform, or if, I fi if I'm fighting for this freedom, or maybe both, I don't know. <laughs> if people look back in 20 years and they see that somebody was fighting this whole time, your work will age very well. If they look back and they see people like hedging their bets and trying to just play the game and fit in, it won't age well. Like the, your voice is you, be authentic, speak your mind, get in trouble, get censored, and we'll hopefully this thing sorts itself out in the years to come and the people that we're fighting I think will be remembered and I think will be looked upon really well. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, appreciate you.